KMR, and we're hanging out on the porting bench. I figured I'd give a couple quick tips, specifically when it comes to porting the 20B thick plate or center housing. Now, this can transfer over to other side housings or side plates as well, but uh, the critical area of the thick plate and 20B, and I've seen other people porting these housings make this mistake, and this has helped prevent me from making this mistake. So I figured it would be a nice courtesy to pass on. Even though these uh, parts are rare, um, obviously we still see quite a few through Mazda Trix, KMR, some of our other customers, and uh, there's still a lot of them out there being modified. And because they're rare, it's even more important that we understand what we can and can't do. And one of the critical areas is actually right up underneath this primary port on the thick 20B housing. And uh, basically you've got a water gallery, part of the cooling that comes up from below the port and actually gets really close to the base of this port. And the common mistake when porting these primary ports on this thick plate is they try to, or people try to drop this down in an effort to extend the port. And although we do slightly, um, you can see that we're very careful. Um, we only make a slight modification to the extension of the port, and we do the majority of our porting on this particular port, either in the uh, opening timing, so we're pushing it uh, open earlier, um, in this case, it's a street port, but if it was a bridge port, then you'd have the bridge over here, which is completely fine on the thick plates. And then uh, there's also the ability to extend the duration. And uh, it's pretty easy to get your finger in behind this upper area. So it's pretty easy to judge the casting movement and uh, judge the area because all not all castings are created equal. Um, Mazda does have quite a bit of casting float. Um, so you always want to check the casting you're working on in these critical areas, whether it be a 13B, a 20B, or any variation of the Mazda cast housings, cast plates. Um, but uh, like I said, it's pretty easy to open it earlier, pretty easy to leave it open longer. Um, but in the volume area where people do what they call extend ports, dropping it down, I don't really recommend it because you can't get your finger in there. Um, Mazda ports and uh, galleries do have a tendency to float slightly, so without being able to either use sub, some type of metal checking device, um, thickness checker, or being able to get your finger in there, you really don't know how, the, how close this water gallery ends up being. And uh, I've seen blocks get ruined because of aggressive porting in this area and punching into the water gallery area. Um, and although there have been people that have attempted to fix those either with brazing um, or welding, uh, generally speaking, it's very difficult to do any type of welding or brazing repairs on these cast components. Um, and Obviously, once uh, in our case, as a, a shop that does customer work, in our case, if we punched through someone's housing, that would be a massive mistake, and we can't afford that, and we stand behind our work. So we're always careful. We're aware of this uh, tolerance indifference, as we've seen it many times through the years, and in this case, with the customer going with a, a, a medium street port, we don't have to worry about anything. We're not trying to extend it too far. We've got a lot of porting left to do, um, but as I was on the porting bench, roughing in some of this shape. In my head, I was mumbling to myself, man, I definitely got to watch this lower area. I wish I had a good way to check. And sometimes I'll take a little bit of welding rod or a metal poker and just kind of feel up in there and get a, a, an idea of where stuff is. Um, because even with just a slight port drop, um, it's surprising how close this bottom area actually is to water gallery. And it could be said too, when you're cutting your bridges or extending uh, duration, you've obviously got to be careful as well. Um, on any of the ports with 20 Bs, they start out very small. Um, the Cosmo had a smaller primary port than the FD3S uh, block. So you have a quite a bit of material that can be removed on your intake opening and duration anyways. So, uh, same thing, just be careful of those water galleries. If you're familiar with the FD3S, this 20B thick plate can sneak up on you. 
Um, it looks similar, but when you really get into the thick plates designed, I've talked about it a little bit in other videos, the internal cast webbing is very unique to support the center bearing, and uh, it has quite a bit of cooling volume in there um, to help keep three rotors cool because they're a third bigger motor than the 13B. The 13B already displaces a lot of heat, so if you think about it, a three rotor is displacing even more heat. So Mazda did add cooling volume um, in this center plate and they were very aggressive with how they did it. And they were uh, very thoughtful and mindful of how they supported the bearing and engineered the plate. And that's part of what makes the 20B strong, um, reliable, um, but when it comes to modifying, we always just have to be careful because they are unique. So that's a little KMR tip passed on uh, from what I learned at Mazda Tricks and through a lot of the great people that I worked with uh, through there. But uh, I want to keep rotaries alive and I want to see people succeed. So uh, whether I'm doing the porting or somebody else is, watch those water jackets, watch those rotor housings, watch those side plates. There's no need to be buying new port parts unnecessarily. And I think that's a wrap.